Good day dear great surgeon with you all a lot and today we gonna talk about our beloved breast chapter from the chapter of endocrinology and as we said breast is the best song. Let's have a ride in this interesting chapter and continue what we have started together, together we can. Dear great surgeons, for breast cancer treatment we might include some endocrinal therapy or irradiation or even chemotherapy. Want to use any of this? The endocrine therapy, like the estrogen receptor on positive tumors, would be indicated. It will be used as a downstaging of the primary lesion. The definitive treatment in old infirm patient will be also endocrine therapy. But when we would use an irradiation therapy, the irradiation for a breast will be with a wide local excision. And the large lesion with high grade marked vascular invasion following mastectomy. But regarding the chemotherapy, it will be used as a downstaging advanced lesion to facilitate the breast conserving surgery, as well as patients with unfortunate grade 3 lesions or axillary nodal disease. So the combination of the endocrine therapy or chemotherapy according to the situation of the patient. So if a patient has a nodal metastasis and she is young, she will need chemotherapy. It will be highly recommended especially of grade 3 tumor. But if she was found her to new positive, it will be including her septum in her treatment as well. In the exam you might be asked as well not only in which indication you use a chemotherapy or endocrine agent but you might be asked about the chemotherapy regimen the chemotherapy regimen is the FAC the full of fluorouracil and prepucine and cyclophosphamide FEC fluorouracil prepucine cyclophosphamide this is the current chemotherapy this was found to be superior to the old CMF regimen in your old general surgery book. Take care. Fluorocene, Ibrepiocene, and Cyclophosphamide. These great surgeons from the endocrine agents that are very famous to be used for breast cancer, it will be the tamoxifen, which is a partial estrogen receptor agonist. It might be asked in the exam how it works. It's a partial estrogen receptor agonist take care the tamoxifen is useful for breast cancer treatment but it will be making the patient to be prone for endometrial cancer it's good for breast bad for the uterus a very famous tricky question about an 88 year old lady again 88 year old lady a very old lady i don't ladies never get old but in the exam some ladies might be old she will be old enough that she will have an upper inner quadrant mass in her right breast for example and the investigation confirms estrogen receptor positive our lady has invasive ductal carcinoma and she has declined operative treatment what is the best course of action of course she must decline the operative treatment she had one operation left and it should be done by the Almighty only. Don't put your hand or your scalp over this patient. Just greet her and support her. She has one operation. You shouldn't be the one to operate her. Give the patient letrozole. An elderly patient might be managed using endocrine therapy alone because eventually most will escape hormonal control. In postmenopausal women, estrogen are produced by the peripheral aromatization of androgen and aromatase inhibitor. And therefore, the most popular agent in this age group will be something like letrozole. On the other hand, a very famous question regarding a 50 year old lady has undergone wide local excision. This is a good point she had. A conservative surgery with a wide local incision and sentinel lymph node biopsy for breast cancer but the histology report 
shows completely excised 1.3 cm grade 1 invasion ductal carcinoma. The central node contains no evidence of metastasis disease. That's great news. So the tumor is estrogen receptor negative. What is the next course of action? Of course, radiotherapy is a routine following any breast conservative surgery. We agreed on the radiotherapy as a routine after any breast conservative surgery. We didn't done we didn't do radical here. We didn't do only a local wide excision. Without irradiation, the local recurrence rate will be about 40%. These rates are potentially lower in the patient who have received endocrine therapy and who have a small low-grade tumors. So practically speaking, conservative surgery equals radiotherapy. Old patient not fit for surgery give her endocrine therapy like letrozole. Very good question is being asked about tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is synthetic partial estrogen agonist, active primarily by binding to the estrogen receptor. So how come it can cause endometrial cancer? Take care. Although it's an antagonist in respect to breast tissue, but it will serve as an agonist in other sites like endometrial cancer. Take care. Someone might ask and say, why don't we do surgeries for breast and get away of this cancer? and no other big deal with all this hormonal and radiation and chemical therapy. Dear great friend, take care. Malignant lesions in the breast will eventually require mastectomy. And by the way, if the patient was lucky enough to have mastectomy and removal of the lymph nodes, she will have a chronic lymphedema and this is not like any other lymphedema, it's due to chronic lymphedema because there is no lymph node to drain all of this lymphatic waste from the lymph. Because all of us know that the axillary lymph nodes are the main lymphatic drainage for the breast. A very rare complication of the chronic lymphedema will be lymphangiosarcoma. So an old patient might come to you after 10 years from her mastectomy and lymphatic clearance with a lymphatic lymphedema and ask you about a lesion in her hand and this will be might be lymphangiosarcoma so take care it's not a normal tumor and very aggressive malignant by the way so the question in the exam will be asking you about an old patient coming to you after 10 years from hair mastectomy with lymphatic clearance, with arm edema and a suspicious malignant lesion in the arm. What this is could be? This is lymphangiocarcinoma, lymphangiosarcoma. There is no lymphangiocarcinoma. It's a lymphangiosarcoma until proven otherwise. These great surgeons take care. There are some signs for the breast cancer and breast lesion. You have to know about it. Like the breast cyst, a very characteristic sign is the halo sign. The halo sign is very characteristic for a simple cyst, even in 48-year-old lady. So, if she is feeling discomfort, you will deal with her with a treble assessment, where the treble assessment would be consisting of history examination, investigation, as well as fine needle biopsy or core biopsy. When you do a mammogram and see a breast cyst in a female patient, we agree that mammogram above 35 year old during investigation and below 35 year old, you go with yes, the ultrasound. So after 35 year old, during your treble assessment for the breast, you find a halo sign. This is a cyst. Reassure your patient, nothing to be done. So if symptomatic, this cyst might be aspirated but if not symptomatic there is nothing to be done you can do aspiration cytology for making sure of the patient uh, psychological status to make him to make her reassured but in a regular region in any body part or any organ it will be indicated for cancer until proven otherwise and deal with either cancer but a homogeneous halo sign cyst 
most people will be benign. Hello sign. We put hello around our saints and our good people. We put hello. We put the press test with a hello sign because it's a good test. Most will be asymptomatic and most will be benign. A very good question is asking what is the mastectomy and what is the wide local excision? Mastectomy is simply removal of the breast while local excision while local excision is removal of the foci you want to remove with a wide excision. It's not the whole breast being removed. It's like a conservative surgery. So when to do mastectomy and when to do a wide local excision. Mastectomy is done in a multifocal tumor with central tumor as well as a large lesion in small breast and if the ductal carcinoma in situ above then 4 cm. So yes, the ductal carcinoma in situ will be require removal while the lobular carcinoma in situ will only require follow up. Yes, this is a common trick in the exam. Don't confuse the duct carcinoma in situ and the lobular carcinoma in situ. The lobular carcinoma itself, not the in situ. The in situ will require follow up, while the lobular carcinoma will require bilateral breast mastectomy. But the duct carcinoma in situ will require only mastectomy. Take care. The wide local excision. Unlike the mastectomy, it's for a solitary lesion, while it's in peripheral tumor and small lesion in a larger breast and when the ductal carcinoma in situ is less than 4 cm. And of course, the mastectomy and wide local excision according to the patient choice, according to your consultation. You will deal with your patient and give him the option can be treated with and the points against and the point with the option you are giving and offering your patient. Keen on your patient and give them the advice and share them the solution they have. It's a life. Surgery is not a choice, it's a life. You have to live it with your patient. By the way, many third world countries and third world countries is the third world in their minds, not in place or certain country. No, 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 no. You will find that the low IQ and the low humanity and the low uh, appreciation of human life and human identity, this is a third world country. So if anyone underestimates the importance and um, feelings of a woman to her breast, it's her identity. That's why you have to share the options for the patient. No matter she might be from a low socioeconomic status, it's her identity and she will discover it just after removal. She might not care before removal and or give you that she doesn't care about whatever option you are giving her. Just get rid of the lesion she have in her breast. No, no, no. In your exam and your guideline and your real life. Share with your patient and be keen that you do the operation for one who understands what you are doing. And if one can't understand, it's the matter and the problem of the instructor, not the recipient. You have to give the instructor according to the terms of the recipient. The breast is an identity for every female, no matter how low socioeconomically she might be coming from. It's her identity and be caring for her. This great surgeon, let's have a title for our breast. What is the most important prognostic factor in breast cancer? It is the nodal status metastasis. If there is nodal involvement or not, there is no nodal involvement, everything can be done and this patient will be cured most probably and aiming for cure. But the nodal status, if there is a metastasis to the lymph node, well, this is another whole story for either the choice of the management modality and life expectancy. These great surgeons take care. Fibroadenoma is the most common swelling solid tumor in the breast. It's not a cancer. It's a benign 
pressed mouse. It is the only mouse that any female can withstand instead of having a scar in her breast. But the fibrocystic changes with acyclic changes with each menstrual cycle will be the fibrocystic disease. And it's an aberration of the normal proliferation of the breast. It will be needing a needle aspiration and will show a straw colored or green fluid or altered blood and cold blood good cyst. Take care. The blood good it's not containing a good blood. The blood good it's the name of the scientist. It's not a good blood at all. It's an altered green fluid blood. It will be painful because it has an estrogen cyclic changes. It become more prominent with every menstrual cycle and completely, completely benign condition. Fibrocystic changes and fibroadenoma poor are benign. One is a cyst, one is adenoma.